today, children, we are dealing with P22, D3, and P22, CF. On a three litre diesel, Land Rover Discovery 4, this applies to three litre diesel in a Range Rover, it applies to 2.7s, it applies to that same engine fitted to a Jaguar, it applies to that same engine fitted to a Ford Territory. So the first thing you're gonna be scratching your head about is, if you say Bank 2, those codes relate to the mechanically operated turbo, which is the driver's side turbocharger when we are talking about a right-hand drive vehicle. So you've got those codes, your issue is relating to the turbo operation for the driver's side or the secondary turbo. So the way these work, it's twin turbo, there's one on each side, the primary is electrically operated and is the one that kicks in at lower RPM or lower load. And the secondary one is vacuum operated. It's on the driver's side, as you can see here. Uh, and that kicks in at the higher RPM and the higher load. So when you've got these codes, I'll run you through troubleshooting before you just shotgun a turbo and or an actuator for the turbo, because you may have vacuum issues. Um, so the first thing you do is, you don't have to have the body off to do this. And if you're one of those keyboard warriors on YouTube who feel it's necessary to inform us all that you can do this without taking the body off, well done. I'm sure your mother's proud. Um, on this side, this is a little port that allows you to access and put uh, a smoke machine in here, which will reveal if you've got any split vacuum lines on the front of the engine with all this spaghetti of, so there's two solenoids on the front of the timing cover and then these vacuum lines that run around the back. So step one is do a vacuum test there. Can you see that, is it focusing? Yep. Uh, do a vacuum test there. Eliminate any vacuum leaks that you may have from the vacuum lines uh, if that shows up. If not, then move to the next thing, which is this. Um, it's a bit hard to see. Down here in the intercooler assembly, oh, sorry, move that out of the way for the purposes of our demonstration. There's a valve that switches a little trap door inside the intercooler pipe depending on which turbo is working. So if that's not operating, you can get these codes um, if it's stuck or if it's stuck on closed or open depending on where it's died. Can you see that? Uh, so the way to test that is put a Mighty Vac on that. You'll hear the little um, trap door. It's just a like a throttle butterfly. Um, then, if that's okay, and you're all good, you then want to come to the back of this manifold. Is, let me move out of the way. There's a solenoid here. If this solenoid is faulty, it won't allow vacuum to the back of the actuator, which is just here. So you need to check that that solenoid's working. If that solenoid's working, the next thing, put a Mighty Vac on here. Uh, now, you can have when, when we test this, we look at live data and you'll be able to see if the actuator is working. So you, when we put the Mighty Vac on this one, we could hear the and see the rod operating, so the diaphragm in this is working, but the actual readings on the actuator didn't change. So you've got to do it all in that order before you start just replacing the turbocharger. And yes, you can change the turbo without lifting the body off if you cho choose to do so.